Hey, what's good everybody? It's my money back again for another discussion video talking about the hundred. My god. Alright, now, I feel like every single week I'm always like, wow, this episode was crazy. Well, this one for sure so far has been one of the craziest this season. Uh, a lot happened. There was a lot of madness. So I say let's go ahead and just jump right into it because there's a lot to discuss. So, overall, this episode was freaking intense. Crazy, had me on the edge of my seat the entire time, emotional, crazy again. Uh, and one of the best episodes ever, and very Hunger Games-esque. I know that's what everybody's saying, but that's how we all felt, so yeah. We need to just get right on into this shit because there's a lot. So let's talk about uh, the Conclave setup, the whole thing. So let me just tell you about this. I was like in denial that they would kill. I knew that these people were going to die. All the people in the Conclave were going to die except for one. But I really didn't think that they were going to like go through with it. And I was just wondering how they were going to stop this fight. But nah, like this is me. 100 writers, are you really gonna kill everybody in the conclave? Uh, yes, we are. But for real, like, for real? Yes. For real? Yes. <laughs> they were not playing. Like, they were fucking ready to kill everybody. Luna, Rowan, and Ilian. And everybody else that was in that shit. And, wow. Let's just talk about everything that happened. So, before we get to the whole Conclave madness, we have a couple of really good moments that started off the episode. So, we have Clark trying to make an alliance with Rowan again. Now, when we get into this part, first of all, I, I'm on Rowan's side when it comes to the whole, like, Clark alliance business. Because everything that he's been trying to do with Clark has not worked out. Some way, he's been betrayed. He's been very patient and they only have three days left. So now he's just kind of like over it. He's like, doesn't trust her anymore. And they only have a couple days to live anyway. And that's how their people are. And Clark kind of, um, kind of, uh, disrespected their culture and everything. So I feel like Rowan, like, was really over it. He was really over the whole bullshit that Clark was trying to pull. And I get it. Like, Sky Crew kind of isn't to be trusted. And that's definitely how the grounders are feeling. So, I, I get that, and I, I can, I'll talk about Clark later, because that whole shit went down crazy, but uh, Rowan, you know, he's like, dude, you're, you've been mocking our faith, every time we come to some type of agreement, it doesn't work out, we're running out of time, your people can't be trusted, even though you can, you might be able to be trusted, but your people be on some whole other shit, every time we try to do something, some old bullshit happens, you know? So I get where Rowan's coming through, coming from, he's over it, he's done. Um, and like, you know, she just dishonored his culture, his, his, his people, and, you know, and Rowan is very like, uh, all about honor and all about being, um, you know, truthful and everything and giving people chances and stuff. And, but he's also like, he don't take that shit. So I get it. You know, he's done fucking around with Sky Crew and fucking around with Clark. So we have a nice, like, um, Indra, Octavia little moment there, which I really loved, with, um, how, like, uh, um, Indra gave Octavia her, like, sword that she was supposed to give to Gaia, but Gaia didn't accept it, so she ended up giving it to Octavia, which I thought was really, just very sweet, and just hit me right in the feels, because, you know, like, Indra did help Octavia kind of grow into the person that she is now, um, and Lincoln as well, who was also very close with Indra. So I just really liked that whole moment. I thought it was really nice. And even though, um, Octavia is fighting for her own clan, um, Indra was saying that, you know, you are my people, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and I liked the part with, uh, Bellamy, Octavia, and Kane, where Bellamy was like, hey, you know, we're going to make this farewell or, 
And he was advising her pretty much to, you know, return to her upbringing and, like, just be that girl under the floor. And, like, she's not hiding. She's pretty much playing a regular assassin. That's how assassins work, you know? They, they're in the shadows. They wait for that moment to strike. They, they're able to fight when they have to, but, you know, they're slippery. And you, your death comes before you even know it. That happened a few times in this episode. But... I liked how he was just telling her, you know, stay tucked like you were taught. Like, that's the way that that's your fighting style. And, you know, use that. Otherwise, you know, you're going to tire yourself out or probably be killed by one of these big dudes anyway. So if you really want to win this, you have to fight with your strengths. So that makes a lot of sense. And even though, like, Bellamy, he wasn't able to say to Octavia, what, how he felt about her and, like, apologized to her or whatever it may have been, um, he still really did pretty much save her life in, in that moment. So I liked that a lot. Um, uh, oop, my notes. <laughs> the conclave is getting started. And King Rowan starts off strong. And let me just let you guys know, I love me some Rowan. Um, sad he's gone. Um, I think we'll get into a little bit more about that in a bit, but I loved how he started off strong. He eliminated the tree crew member right off the bat. So, and they have been having pretty much mortal enemies this whole time. So it makes sense that he would either target tree crew or be the one to take them down. Um, and then Indra and Gaia have a little moment because Indra know or Gaia knows like, how important her people are and like leading her people is to Indra. So I liked that little moment. Um, Octavia still keeping her head down and Luna comes out of the blue is fighting for death, which is like, what the fuck? What's going on at the beginning of the episode? I was like, Oh fuck. Now Luna's here. This bitch is really deadly. First of all. And she's pretty much fighting to have everybody die. When she started to lose it, she kind of went to the dark side, but I also understand where she's coming from. She's another person that didn't trust Sky Crew. Kind of, Sky Crew kind of turned her into this dark person because of everything. Like, as soon as Clark and everybody came looking out for her, like, bad things happened to her people. So I get why she doesn't like or doesn't fuck with Sky Crew. I get it. I totally understand. One second. But... I will say I'm still on other people's side, you know, when it comes to the whole Luna thing, you know, I agree with some of the things that Luna feels. I understand it, but I instantly was like, "Mm, I can't fuck with you no more because you're trying to just have everybody die. That ain't cool. We need somebody. So at least somebody in humanity can survive. (sighs) Excuse me. Allergies have been fucking me up like this whole week. So we have a little moment where luckily Octavia gets away from Luna because she's crazy. Good thing. And she runs into Ilian and they have a little conversation. He's like, I'm not here for you. I'm here for my people. And I really liked Ilian in this story. But what do you guys think? Do you think he was really there for his people or was he there for Octavia? Maybe a little bit of both, but mostly I think for his people. Um, because he is a strong warrior and he is for his people. He's still a grounder. He still goes by the customs that they all go by. So I get that he was there for them. Um, and I just really liked Ilian's character. I thought he was brave and honorable and like really wise. He had a lot of good things to say. And it just, his character arc was unfortunate because, you know, his whole family, the thing that helped him with his whole family and the the chip is just horrible. And his death was just shocking. Like, I did not see that coming. Like, I had a feeling he was going to die, even though I didn't want him to. But I did not see that shit coming. He got the straight up Denise arrow through the throat, like, in Walking Dead. Came out of nowhere. I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it just shocked me. Um, you know, I do not like Echo. So it was Echo's arrow. And I do not like that character. I hate that bitch. But I will give it to her. She has a good motherfucking shot. <laughs> that bitch can shoot. <laughs> so watch out for that bitch arrow because you'll be lucky if you survive one of those. But I was just really sad to see Ilian go. <sighs> I mean, I feel like he just wasn't in the story that long. 
and I liked his character, and it's just sad that he, you know, he did, had such a short run. I wish he could have been there a lot longer, and for Octavia's sake as well, because he was kind of pulling her out of the dark, you know, place that she was in. So, and I like what, uh, how she, when she was forced to kill him, or like, mercy kill him, how she said something like, uh, that he had previously told her, or reiterated it, about how, don't fear death, it's you know, the beginning of the next journey or something like that. And I really liked that moment. And it's just sad because like in that kind of environment in that type of battle royale situation, you don't have time to grieve the people that you lose. And that's kind of how I felt about it because the, the episode was just going like this. It's like all these people that we lost, you couldn't even like grieve through it. And that's kind of what the characters are going through. So I liked how they did that. Some people felt like that was rushed. And I understand that as well, especially for these main three characters that we lost. But I get it. In that type of situation, you have three days, you're in this fucking battle, you know, Hunger game situation. You're still being hunted. You're still being, you know, about to die, whatever. Like, you don't have time to grieve. And so they kind of wanted the audience to feel like, like, like the same way as the characters in the Conclave. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. So we have a nice um, Bellamy, Rowan, Echo moment. So Bellamy scopes Echo out. He already know who the fuck it is. Kane tells him to go straight up Assassin's Creed. So the Blakes are both doing the whole Assassin's Creed thing. And I wish he could have just fucking choked that bitch out. But of course, no, they're not going to give us what we want. They didn't give us anything that we wanted in this episode. And uh, Rowan interrupts the whole like fight between Echo and Bellamy. And banishes Echo from Asgata for her dishonorable actions or whatever. And that that's another time where we saw Rowan being, you know, a good leader. And not just because she's her people and fighting for her people or whatever. You know, he's like, you, you dishonor me. You dishonor our people. You, you can't be fucking around like that because, like, if you were to get caught... Like, everybody would be fucked, pretty much. So, that, I mean, is painful for Echo, I'm sure. But at the same time, you fucked up, you got caught up, and that's what happens. And she should have known better. She should have known that her king was, wasn't was going to be fucking with that. So, I liked that. But what will happen with Echo's character now? I'm pretty interested. I don't really like her like that. But I can see them going somewhere very interesting with that. We'll have to see. Um, Bellamy and Rowan have a really nice talk about Octavia and how, and it just shows that Bellamy loves his sister and has a lot of faith in her. And I really liked that. I really liked that he was still gunning for her no matter what. And he really believed that she could win. And he was the only person really that believed that she could win this fucking fight. And he was the one that advised her, advised her to win. And if it wouldn't have, if it hadn't have been for Bellamy, she would not have won because of like the things that he advised her to do so yeah I really liked that moment and Octavia overheard it so I really like I think that she really needed to hear that come from Bellamy because of their rocky relationship that they've been having since the whole Lincoln thing and the whole Pike situation and all of that um and you know the Blake siblings have both gone through their their dark paths and so like they can't pass blame back and forth to each other because they both made mistakes they both have had some dark times so it's time that they come back together and start supporting one another and i really liked that um do 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 rowan and octavia make an alliance to stop luna's crazy ass which i really liked again rowan coming through being reasonable being a, a decent fucking motherfucking person and it's just unfortunate that he went down the way that he did fucking black rain came out of nowhere bad timing it's just really unfortunate because i really really liked his character and i did not want to see him go and i just like i was like come on like anything please anything stop this death that happened and he got drowned by luna and I'm still, like, at, still, after a couple hours later, I was like, man, like, c could he still be alive? Maybe he just, like, stood still and was like, oh, she'll leave me alone and think I'm dead. And I'm just gonna hold my breath. I don't know. 
I'm pretty sure he's dead, but at the same time, I just don't want him to be, and I hope that he just pops up magically, but I try not to get my hopes up too high in that regard. And then, and it just made me mad, and I just didn't, like, again, I wasn't able to grieve his death the way that I wanted to, because everything just happened so fast, so I hope he gets a couple mentions throughout, you know, the next couple of episodes. If he is gone, he gets a, a right kind of proper send away. Um, cause all we really saw is Echo being devastated to find out that her king was dead. And I really actually liked that little moment that we had when they snuffed out his candle and Echo was like really sad because, you know, even as much as I hate her character, I do like, she was very loyal to her king and clearly probably cared about him a lot more than we were led on to think. So it's just like, I kind of fell for her just a tiny bit in that moment, even though fuck that bitch. So then we have this whole Octavia and Luna situation, which her whole, like, once Luna started doing her, um, like, whole creepy villain speech, I was like, all right, she's, like, too far gone. She needed to go. And then right before Octavia stabbed her, I, was, I knew that she had been played and it was going to happen like that. And I just really, like, kind of was like, oh, finally, like, Luna's gone. Like, yeah, I get it. A lot. Of, I liked Luna. I really did. I really liked her character, but she just kind of lost it for me. And if you're going to be tripping, you got to go. So I kind of jumped off the Luna train really fast when she started going crazy. Um, even though, like, the fight scenes were really badass. This entire episode from everybody, honestly. Um, and then I just liked how Octavia's speech, like, showed how much she's grown and, like, how she's starting to dig herself out of this fucking, like, dark tunnel <coughs> what she was in and like how she was like paying homage to Lincoln and who I loved I loved Lincoln's character I thought he was just so pure so good so strong and just like the way that he died kind of was like just made me feel really sad similar to the way um Abraham died in The Walking Dead because there's just these strong great nice characters and I just was devastated to see them go and so I really liked how we got some homage paid to him. And she was just saying, we're all one people. We're all together. And that's all that Lincoln wanted. That's the kind of person he was. You know, he was able to admit that what his people were doing to Sky Crew when they first landed from the Ark was wrong. And he was able to take somebody in. And he was just all about everybody. He thought everybody was equal. And I liked how... After all the bloodshed, after all the madness, Octavia was the one. And with the help of Lincoln's, you know, memory was able to be the one to bring all the clans together, finally, you know. And, yeah, I feel like it could have happened a lot sooner, but that's just how they are. That's how they were born and raised. That's their culture, you know. That's how they've always done it. That's how all their commanders have been initiated to lead their people is through this blood fight conclave whatever so I mean yeah that's just how it is and you got three days left there ain't no point in trying to change that now so I mean I guess this whole thing was just all about you know first of all a lot of people not trusting Sky Crew anymore a lot of grounders not trusting them um even more so now because of the end of the episode and I get it. Like, they don't trust them. Like, why would you, after everything that's happened, it's kind of out of, as a result of their actions. Um, so yeah. And then we have this little moment where Bellamy just gets fucking kidnapped by some random motherfucker. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And I was like, oh, hell no. Somebody, whoever that is, need to get their motherfucking hands off Bellamy. Okay? Because I am Team Bellamy. He's my favorite character out of everyone, and I do not appreciate anybody trying to run up on him, so yeah, and he gets taken, we see later, to the bunker, so this is the part where I'm just like feeling all types of way, first of all, what the fuck, Clark, what the fuck, the fuck are you doing, like, she, first of all, oh ye of little faith, has given all of the grounder people, just a, yet another reason not to trust your ass. I get it, I get it, I get it. You're just thinking fast, you're thinking in survival mode, you know. Also, to be fair, they did find the bunker. Also, to be fair, 
they're the only people that can really run the bunker and survive in it because they're the only ones I know how to run technology and stuff. But I feel like she acted just a little bit too fast, just a wee bit too hasty to make that crazy ass decision to lock everybody out, including some of her own people, including Octavia, who fought to the death and won. And for, for your people and everybody, the way that you wanted to, <sighs> sorry, but I love me some Clark, but I had to drop her ass like a hat after for this decision. We'll have to see what happens next. Maybe I'll be able to pick her up. But for now, no, bitch. No. Like, especially for Octavia's sake. I'm on Octavia's side on this one. Because if I were Octavia and I fought to the death in some fucking crazy ass death match. And then I won. Like, honestly, that's Octavia's fucking right. That's her... She gets to choose who gets to go in that motherfucking bunker. Not you, Clark. So you need to hold and slow your roll and chill. Because that shit ain't cool. And now she's just giving another reason for people to not trust Sky Crew. And you only got three days left. And if Octavia gets up in that motherfucking bunker... Luckily, I think she knows that Bellamy cares a lot for Clark. So she probably wouldn't do anything... But if that wasn't the case, Clark's ass would be dead in a heartbeat, I swear. Especially if I were Octavia, I'd hunt that bitch down so quick, she would be done. She would be the 13th motherfucking tribute up in that deathmatch for show. And I just was like, I just, I just can't agree with that. I really can't. Like, Clark agreed to this whole, you know, thing. She disrespected all the grounder people, tried to run up and lead them and be the commander of their people and all this. Like... And then, and she just has too much of a, kind of like a God complex, I guess one of the titles of the episode. Yeah, somebody need to chill her ass out because for real, she's only stewing the pot even more at this point. Um, she would have just waited a little bit longer, see how the shit played out, then maybe something else, they could have worked something out. And they it obviously did, but she didn't even wait to see, so damn. She betrayed everybody. She betrayed her people. She betrayed Rowan. She betrayed Kane. I mean, like, what the fuck, bitch? Like, your own chancellor is still outside, so what are you going to do? Even though I did see Kane was inside the bunker in the preview. So I guess we'll just have to see how that plays out. But so far for me, and let me know what you guys think, I'm not I'm not with what Clark just decided. I'm Team Bellamy for this, on for sure. And, you know, Bellamy woke up and he was like, what the fuck is going on? And when he found out that that was Clark's decision, he looked really, like, heartbroken and disappointed, angry. So I think next episode we're going to get a lot of crazy shit. So let's go do a quick cr predictions and questions and all that stuff. Um, first of all, yes, um, Bellamy, my number one. So whoever is against Bellamy is against me. So far. So, and we saw in the preview, she's pointing a gun at him. I'm like, bitch, think twice before you do that. Because I don't have enough. Even though we all know she ain't going to be able to shoot Bellamy. Because, first of all... <laughs> so, this is what I the, instantly noticed. She had somebody go get Bellamy. Like, specifically him. Laid him all out on a chair, nice and comfy, until he came back to... And didn't think, you know, couldn't get anybody else. But she made sure that Bellamy's ass was in that fucking bunker. So, clearly she cares very deeply for him. So, if you're not a, a Bellark fan, which I definitely am. Sorry, but I, I see that. I, I, I see it building. I still see it building up very nice and slow. And who who would do that? Like, <laughs> who would do that if you didn't really, really care for somebody? You wouldn't just... Like, if she didn't care for him, she would have just left him outside with his sister, you know? But she chose to, like, have him and only him kidnapped and brought into the bunker so that he could survive. Um, so next weekend, or next week, Bellamy and Clark are definitely going to have a very uh, heated and passionate discussion about this whole leaving his sister out. Um, and this whole decision that she's made, and I'm really, really excited to see that, because I love when they, like, have those emotional, angsty kind of conversations. I'm really excited. What will Bellamy say to Clark? What will Clark say to Bellamy? There, I think there's going to be some confessions of how everybody feels about each other. He'll probably talk her down out of her 
funk or whatever. Probably be able to convince her. Because they need each other. They they feed off each other. So I'm just really, really excited to see this whole interaction between them. Ugh, I can't wait. Um, How will this fight resolve? Will we get a love confession or something? Uh, I sure do hope so. Um, how will Octavia and Kane be feeling about this? Especially Octavia. Because if I were her, I would be fucking mad. I would be so mad. Like, I, I think my head would explode if I just went through this horrible, traumatic death match. Just to be locked out of the bunker that I, technically, my ass won. Like, if I, I, she gets to decide who lives and who dies. Because she won that whole thing. That was the deal. Who my ass would be mad. So, did Kane get inside? We saw him in the trailer in the bunker. What about Monty? What's going to happen with Monty? Jasper crew? We didn't see any of that. We still haven't seen any of that in the preview for next week either. So, I just want to see how that plays into this because they're locked out too now. Will we see Raven next, next episode? What's up with Raven? Jeez, like we still have a lot of characters we need to come to a conclusion with. And I still don't think we've seen everybody die yet. Um, do you agree with Clark's decision? Do you, are you on Clark's side or are you on the other people's side? Everybody but Clark's side. Um, me personally, I'm a little bit more on the grounder side on this one. You know, they, they, even though it's kind of a fucked up way to come to a con conclusion, especially at the end of the world, it's the end of the world though. So y'all gonna die anyway. And they were trying to be fair and square about it in their own way. And, you know, if that's how they were all, that's how their culture is. So, you know, and you just got to respect that. And Clark has not been respecting the other people in the world. You know, she's here for her, all her people. I get that. But she really kind of betrayed her people and everybody else. And she needed to chill the fuck out. So I'm, I'm not with Clark on this one. I don't care what you say. Sorry, I'm not fucking with it. Because, like, say if I was in that show, my ass would probably be one of the people left outside and I would not be fucking with that bitch. Not at all. I'd be like, Echo, take one of them arrows and shoot through that bitch throat too. Because I done had enough of this Juan Hater character trying to rule everybody and telling everybody how to live and how to do this and that. Um, so I guess I'm Team Bellamy on this one and I just can't wait to see how that resolves. And, like, I just want to see him be like, so why did you just kidnap only me? Like, what's up with that? And, like, he, they know each other. She knows that he's not going to just be able to sit back and let his sister be out, outside of the door. So what does she expect him to do? I just can't wait for next week's episode. I think it's going to be extremely, extremely interesting. So, that being said, let me know what you guys thought of this week's crazy fucking episode of the 100 let me know what you think is going to happen next week are you excited for it um tell me all your thoughts about the questions i've asked are you with clark are you with bellamy octavia are you sad about the deaths that we lost do you miss luna and Ilian and rowan i sure do even though luna lost it but i still really liked her character i really miss rowan even though I'm still kind of in denial that he's dead. I'm not sure why. I think it's just the way that he died. I just don't... I just still can't believe it. Ah, fuck. Ugh, it's so frustrating. I think I just need, like, a solid, like, funeral. Him in a box. We see that he's dead and he's not going to wake up so that I can just, like, get over it. But, you know, that's me. So... Yeah, uh, all right. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. Please, please, please comment down below and let me know what you thought of this week's episode of The 100, Die All, Die Merrily. <sighs> it was crazy. And I really want to know how everybody's been thinking about it. I've been watching all types of reactions and reviews just because I'm just interested. So much happened. And there's a lot of different ways to feel. There's teams and different uh, approaches to the decisions that were made in this episode so I think it's a really really great topic for discussion um and yeah next week should be pretty fucking interesting as well so I cannot wait only a couple more days and we're back to the hundred so yeah comment down below like if you liked this video um comment and subscribe and follow me on all other types of forms of social media to get to know me better 
and all that shit. I be posting and I let you know when I will be posting things and, you know, just to see what kind of person I am, not talking about the hundred and stuff. So yes, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon. Check out my reaction video for this one too because there's a lot of craziness in that and it's a great reaction. I think there are a lot of great reactions out there. So yeah, anyway, I'll talk to you guys very soon. See ya.